concept he talks about often of songs of the Atlantic nation. I've really, I've glommed onto that now. What he's talking about is the amazing sharing process that's gone on. Not just the old ballads that came to America, but all kinds of minstrel songs like that that were formed here in America and then went over there, let alone the Tin Pan Alley stuff from the turn of the century from here that's over there, or the music hall songs that came to us. It's all over the place, integrated. And uh, I have, uh, my next song is a prime example of that too. My folks, um, my mother was from Missouri, my father from North Carolina, and they met in New York, so I'm a New York City kid. I couldn't help that. But they got the bug pretty early on to try to go and find rural places in Eastern America that might not have electricity still, where people learned their songs out of rural tradition. And they found some great people, not only in the Appalachians, where you might expect it, but also uh, in a, a logger from upstate New York, who we'll visit in a, a little while tonight, and a woman from my adopted state in New Hampshire. I live in Portsmouth, and she was from Jaffrey. A woman named Mrs. Fish, who we'll probably sing a song from as well. But these folks were from the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Now it's kind of fancy down there, uh, Ocracoke and um, Nags Head and a lot of time-sharing condos and stuff. But in the 40s, it was really fishing villages, and they were just as isolated as the Appalachian people were, so that their old song stayed. They met a couple. His name was Charles Tillett, known as Tank Tillett, and uh, the wife's name was Eleazar, a great Bible name. And they met um, through a bunch of circumstances, a friend of my father's who'd been to college and was from that area. And uh, they were excited to know somebody who cared about the old songs. And my folks had just gotten, in 1940, a disc cutter. I mean, I, my brother and I look at each other and say, where is that thing now? We would love to have it. But it took uh, acetate-covered paper discs, and when you put the needle down, if you wound it up, it would cut as you sang into the microphone. And with that, and later with tape in the 1950s, they collected a thousand songs for the Library of Congress. Astounding. And that was a hobby. <laughs> a hobby. So I remember as a kid hearing one of these discs, and it was Charles Tillett. He, he'd gotten what he called his accordion from the, from the Sears catalog, and he was playing it pretty well, and he played this tune called Somebody's Waiting for Me. But he didn't know any words, just the tune. I remember hearing that. A few years ago, we found it thanks to the internet, and by God, it's Atlantic Nation. It is a, a Scottish music hall from 1917. Um, 